There has been a huge decline in mental health around the world, which is why we're so committed to creating more content than we ever have. Thanks so much for being a part of our journey. How do you see yourself? Are you very critical of how you look or behave? When talking about things that can destroy your self-esteem, your first thought may be to do with the effects of social media or toxic friendships. But that's not all. The way you view and speak to yourself can also play a very big role. You might not even be aware of some of these tendencies, such as thinking in a self-deprecating manner. So to help you, here are seven things that are destroying your self-esteem. Number one, assuming other people's opinions of you. Do you always think you know how someone feels about you? Let's say you have a friend who's suddenly acting differently than normal. Would you jump the gun and believe that it's you who caused their change in mood? This form of overthinking can be damaging to your mental health and affect how you see yourself. Remember that not every negative thing has to do with you. Perhaps they were just having a bad day or are thinking about someone else. Assuming their bad mood is your fault may be a thought process caused by bad experiences in the past. So don't forget to take it easy and reassure yourself whenever the instinct and patterns repeat themselves. It may also be good to surround yourself with understanding and supportive friends who can reassure you in times when you feel insecure. Number two, carrying long-term emotional baggage. Everyone goes through bad experiences in one way or another. And while it's not that easy to let go of them, these unresolved mental hurdles can really stick with you and hinder your growth. It's important and healthy to take your time, but when you're ready to take another step forward, it's good to start making peace with your past. Remind yourself that your previous bad experiences don't define you as a person. They're just memories. Through forgiveness, peace, and acceptance, you can let go of its power and hold over you. Number three, letting yourself go. When was the last time you had a proper healthy meal? Do you often sleep late and load up on junk food? It's easy to take yourself for granted, but what most don't realize is that these small things can add up over time and become habits. You end up sending yourself a mental message that you are not worth the effort, and this can lead to hopelessness. A good tip on rewiring your mindset is by thinking if you treat someone you respect like you've been with yourself, is this how you would take care of your friend? If it isn't, then perhaps your body is lacking the pampering it needs. You could try to adopt just one good habit for yourself and stick to it. Take note of how you feel and continue the process until it becomes a sustainable routine. Ultimately, there is no such thing as a perfect lifestyle. A realistic goal instead is to feel better in your own skin and to develop a good and healthy mental state. Number four, being an unforgiving self-critic. Do you tend to obsess over your flaws no matter how small they are? According to Itamar Schatz, a PhD candidate at Cambridge University, the act of magnifying the degree to which minor flaws in your appearance may be noticed or judged by others is called the spotlight effect. This near constant habit of worrying over your flaws can be harmful to your self-confidence and self-esteem since it can lead to negative thinking patterns. This preoccupation with your imperfections may also cause you to not focus or do any of the activities you want to enjoy. So if you find yourself getting worked up over it all the time, you can try to recognize when you're having these moments and follow up with reassuring and kind affirmations. Most of the time, we are our own worst enemies. By learning how to rewire our self-deprecating habits, we're slowly building a better outlook on ourselves. Number five, complimenting others while comparing yourself secretly. How do you feel when you see others celebrate their accomplishments? Do you praise them through gritted teeth? A lot of people, especially women, tend to do this, but it can be very damaging to your self-esteem. It's a form of self-sabotage because the more you're complimenting their good traits, the more you're contrasting them to your own. And once you feel that you're not the same as them, you end up developing a negative self-image. If you truly want to compliment someone, be genuine about it. Not everything is a competition. If this is something you really struggle with, it may help to keep a gratitude journal. In time, you may learn to see yourself in a kinder light. Number six, you tend to use always and never. Are you the type of person who makes extreme statements? Perhaps you say, always wash the dishes or never wanna watch that show. Although it sounds trivial, these permanent sounding words can make your statements sound final and make you feel like you can't do anything to change them. What if you wanted to skip the dishes or watch that show? Chances are you feel like you can't do these things because it feels irrevocable, which can lead to a loss of confidence and a sense of hopelessness. 
It's helpful to remember that in your life, there are always opportunities for random, spontaneous moments. So as much as possible, try avoiding permanent words and don't be afraid of opening yourself up to new experiences. And number seven, ignoring your emotional signals. Do you try to understand your feelings or avoid them? Rejection and abandonment are contributing factors to a lack of self-confidence. After all, if you don't try to understand where your own emotions are coming from, chances are you won't be able to cope or handle them properly. Feelings are feelings. They are automatic and tend to happen whether you like them or not. For this reason, it's good to acknowledge and identify why you're feeling that certain way. If you're sad, try to give some time for yourself to accept, understand, and cope with it. If you're happy, try to determine why and show gratitude for it. Having a good understanding of your own emotions may lead to a boost in confidence. Did you relate to any of these points? Let us know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with those who might benefit from it. And don't forget to hit the notification bell icon to get notified whenever Psych2Go posts a new video. As always, the references and studies used in this video are added in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and see you in our next video.